Hope Channel, Changing Lives. Hello and welcome once again to Hope Channel Ghana, your preferred Christian station, and welcome to Watch These Signs. Today we are happy to welcome you onto the show and to let you know that we'll be discussing a very interesting topic, and this has to do with work. What is the Bible's perspective of work? Should the Christian work? And what kinds of work should you involve yourself in? So that's what we would look at. Uh, in Exodus, we are told that we have six days to labor and a day to rest. So that suggests that work is important. So we'll look at all the biblical perspective on this issue of work. Our key text will be 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11. My name is Solisa Safo. As usual, our guest uh, is Pastor Kwabna Chum. And we will start this program with a prayer. Can we bow our heads and pray? Gracious Father, once again, we want to open your word so that you can teach us. We are praying that all the rulers around the world, you give them the answer on the story so that they'll be able to understand the biblical perspective of work so that we will know what to do in these times whether it is important to work or just to be a busybody going around in non calance not working i pray that you help us to understand you so that we can live for you at the dying moments of the world history build us throughout the program in the name of jesus we are prayed amen amen our key text is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11. And this is what the Bible says. That you also aspire to live a quiet life, to mind your own business, and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. This is the text, and that would be a key text we would focus on. Work. Pastor, is this also a, a Bible rule? Mm, yes. Okay. Right from creation. Mm. We read Genesis chapter 2 and 15. When Adam and his wife were put in the Garden of Eden, the Lord told them to dress the garden. Mm -hmm. So work was assigned to them. And when you read the Bible critically, the fourth commandment, there's work inside. Mm -hmm. And Paul is saying here that everybody should be able to work with his hands. Mm -hmm. We have to work so that we'll be able to have enough means to support ourselves mm -hmm. and support the work of God. So it is, it is a biblical injunction. Okay. Since it is enshrined in the, in the fourth commandment. Okay, so uh, in Genesis, you say the concept of dressing the garden and keeping it involves work. Work, we have to work. Yes. How is that so? After all, in the garden, everything was provided. There was food. Mm -hmm. So you eat and sleep. What, 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 what work was what there in the I garden? thinking about was that, you see, they had all kinds of creeping plants. Mm -hmm. Uh, they will have to straighten them up so that they will grow and not be touching others and also to be sure that uh, if a plant was turning uh, towards a, 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 the wrong direction they will be able to keep it in place uh, plants are not like human beings mm -hmm. so that the place will look nice everything will be in its place so that was work they had to do that with all the beautiful things God had done they were working from morning to evening every day they were working so that they can also enjoy the place that God has given them. So God intentionally assigned them that job to dress the garden and to keep it. So Pastor, the, if I'm, I get you, before human beings sinned, yes. 
There was work. There was work. So work is not part of the punishment. It's not a punishment. No, no, no. no because uh, some people argue that after the fall, God told Adam, from the sweat of your brow, you would eat. So some people assume that it's a kind of punishment or a curse because of the fall. So, But what you said is, the text we've read, it suggests that in Genesis 2.15, it suggests that even before the fall... They were working. So, in fact, uh, the aspect that people are saying uh, work was added to Adam as a punishment mm -hmm. is not something I should uh, 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 support. They had sinned, and God knew that the world was going to change. Mm -hmm. Thistles were going to grow. Mm -hmm. So, God allowed them to know that this, this time around, mm -hmm. uh, things were not going to be as easy as when they were in Eden. Mm -hmm. So, the work will be a bit intensified. Mm. That is why there will be sweat on their faces. But they knew they were working in the Garden of Eden, so I don't think they took it as a punishment. But they knew that the air was going to change, uh, things were going to be different, and they had to put in extra energy mm. before they could get food to it. Mm. Know, that is how I see it. Okay, back to our text again. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 4.11. When Paul says, work with your hands does that suggest that all human beings must necessarily learn a skill yes mm -hmm. all human beings must have a vocation which they will have to do with the answer you see when we read Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10 there's something there but i, I want i wanted to read the first part of Ecclesiastes it Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10 verse 10 Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10 says whatever your hands your hand finds to do do it with your might yes i just wanted to end mm -hmm. what, you are, what your hands finds to do do it with your might mm -hmm. some people i say i don't have a job mm -hmm. i don't know anything mm -hmm. but the bible says whatever your hand finds to do mm -hmm. do it i want to read some 104 verse 23 that's something that Psalm 104, 23. verse 23. Psalm 104, verse 23. And it reads, Man goes out to his work and to his labor until the evening. You see, this man is generic. Mm. And we have to look at um, Genesis 127 to see what God did. Okay. God, yes, let's read that. Genesis 1 verse 27 we are looking at the issue of man, man. genesis 127 so god created man in his own image in the image of god he created him male and female, female. so this them. text man there refers to the male and the female, female god created a, a god mm -hmm. and the bible says that if you are considered to be man mm -hmm. created the image of god mm -hmm like he did in Eden, then you have to necessarily begin to work from morning till evening, every day, till uh, uh, the Sabbath hours. So if you don't work from morning to evening, you cease to be man. Pastor, <laughs> this is serious. It's not serious. Oh, but I have graduated from school, unemployed graduate. I lie in the bed from morning, at least my mother is feeding me, my okay. father is feeding me. It, it, does that suggest I'm less of a human being if yes. we're using man here? We, we are not the human being God created in the garden of it. We could be anything else, but not the human being God created in the garden of it. You have to work necessary from morning till evening except the Sabbath hours. So that when you look at the Sabbath commandment, mm. so six days, Ezra 24, so 20, uh, 8 to 11, mm. six days shall, shall thou labor. And do all your work. And do all your work. So everybody has a certain kind of work. He has to do. You, you have finished school. You, 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 you don't have a white color job. But can't you do something? Can't you sell house water? Or sell cocoa? Or sell something? Do something with your hand. It is not acceptable by God that you should sit there the whole week. You will not do anything. There is several hours you go and sit in the church house. Doing what? You are not supposed to be there. Because we have the first place defied and, 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 
and, and we're, not, we're not able to keep the fourth commandment. Six days shall thou live. Four, verse 2. Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your courts and strengthen your sticks. When you look at this thing, my thing, we are going to pitch a, 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 tent. a tent. No. Mm. God wants you to, as you are praying, begin to stretch your mind, stretch your imaginations, asking yourself what you can do at the interim. And then God will give you the ideas. So you have to begin to think and pray, Lord, my work is in your hands. I'm thinking, give me the ideas. And God, surely as his Westerns, will give you the ideas as to what you have to do so that you can be able to go to the church and present your offerings. So begin to think. Don't just lazy around and say, I don't have any work to do, so I, I can't wait. Begin to think. Back. God will give you all kinds of ideas that will tell you what you have to do in the interim. Whatever your hands find to do, do it with all that might, so that we can feel this injunction. Pastor, let me ask, the Christian perspective or the biblical perspective on work, are there some works which are more important than others? As far as... Because you mentioned sell cocoa. But then I want to sit in the <laughs> office and, and put all my talent. How can I put all my talent to selling cocoa? Is the office were not more important than selling cocoa? No job is better than the other. Mm. Somebody said, if you are doing a job and you enjoy, you enjoy it, mm. you realize you never work a day because you are so happy. People are so enthused with 
white collar jobs. But when you go to the developed countries, they look at the vocational jobs. So begin to ask yourself, yes, I'm going to say this in philosophy. What else can I do that will give me the satisfaction so that I can make money and support God's work? So it's not that you think somebody is... I have a story of a woman mm. who just erected a shed and built some uh, fire side in earth and then started selling cocoa. At times, we I would drive my car go and buy some of the cocoa. We never had any idea how much she was making a day. Mm. Before we realized, the woman and all her children were in the U.S. She had enough money to take all of them to America. So there are some things you might not even know how many people make out of it? Because we all think when you sit there and you wear your tie, that is where you are doing. But I remember one day I met somebody who was selling a duster. He had about 400 of them. So I was chatting him, how much do you make a day? Said, if I sell them, I get 400 times two. 800. That's 800 a times day. a day. When the tie-wearing person... <laughs> will not get 1,000 a month. So there are some things you might even know. So when God gives you the ideas, take it, and you will make the money. There was a woman who was praying for a church, saying, "Lord, give me a job." So when they were praying, one of them had an imprint that she tell a woman to go and sell a condo. Mm. She was angry. Of course. Why should I go and don't you respect me? Said, oh, madam, I mean, that's what I had. That was the imprint in my mind. Okay, okay, I'll do it just to satisfy her curiosity. She lived in a certain part of the town and they just built a small a table, started selling go. When the condo was lying on the table, it was finished. The woman has built a house out of selling condo. Now they have a condo factory in the house. Whatever your hands find. Try to do, do it all that we are I would enjoy it because the Bible says in Proverbs 10, is it for, Proverbs 10 22? That text is so important. Proverbs 10, 22. Let, let me see. Yes, Proverbs 10. Mm. Mm, the blessing of the Lord. Yes, read it. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. The blessings of the Lord makes one rich. Yes. And he adds no sorrow with it. When God is blessing you with whatever you are doing, you will make the money and you will be so happy. Because after all, at the end of the day, it's not money that you look for. I know a lady. You see, <laughs> she was also talking, lamenting. So we're just chatting and saying, ah, can't you say a uh, uh, kele mm. See, I don't know how to say kele wole. Me, I know how to do it. You just uh, peel the ripe plantain, cut it into pieces, <laughs> and then fry some uh, 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 granules, you know, add ginger and things. It's the only food where you have to count and sell. <laughs> Please watch out for fastest Kelly Willie special. <laughs> Kelly Willie. She started Kelly Willie one evening. People continued buying until about uh, 4 a.m. Mm. So she said, now I have a job. And now you still selling the Kelly Willie. Mm. You see, this is because we have not stretched our minds and we have not asked God to tell, let us do what we have to do. That's why people are saying they don't have jobs. They are jobs all over. Coco is a very big business in Ghana. The breakfast of Ghana every day is coco. Every city or village you go, every morning the food yes, is coco. So why do and coco is condo and water and heat? So what's your problem? Hmm. <laughs> but, uh, you see, this issue about blessings, we read about the patriarchs of old. Yes. Abraham said God blessed him mm. and he had cattle, sheep, servants. Mm. Now, what is the connection between work and blessings? Because if I don't work, can God still bless me to be rich? No, it is not so possible. You want to read Genesis 26, mm -hmm. uh, 12 to 14. Isaac had to sow before the Lord blessed him. Mm. And Abraham. You see, when we read Isaiah 55, 6 to 8, the Bible says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Mm. My ways are not your ways. There was farming. Abraham went to Egypt. And my Miss Sarah was so beautiful. Everybody was enthused. They were talking to her. So they came to Abraham and said, this woman, he said, she's my sister. <laughs> so Pharaoh took the woman to his house. Then the Lord sent plagues, trouble everywhere. Pharaoh was worried. Ah, so he came back. 
Abraham, this woman said, hey, hey, my wife, hey, and you have told me to take my wife to the house. You want God to come and kill me. So to compensate him, let's <laughs> read Genesis. Genesis chapter uh, 13, 1 and 2. Genesis. That is where Abraham got his riches. Genesis chapter 13, verse 1 and 2. It says, Then Abra Abram went up from Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and lot with him to the south. Abram was very rich in livestock, in silver, and in gold. Yes. So that was the compensation to Abraham. So God, uh, when we have very good thoughts, God turned a difficult situation into a blessing. Mm -hmm. You have to get something to do before you'll be able to entertain the blessing of God. God will not bless empty hands. You have to work, find a job. So whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all that might. And there are all kinds of A lady sells uh, pepper, mm. this ground pepper. She has built a, she has built a house. Mm. A woman was selling uh, cabbage and those things. She had no money to take herself and her husband. They are not in the US. Mm. So whatever you are, if God is blessing you, you see that the money will be coming every day without any sweat. So find something to do, and the Lord will bless you. Pastor Big, today we live in a technological world. So brain work. Mm -hmm. Is it always the time that I must use my hand? Or I cannot, if I sit in an office, I do a lot of brain work. Mm -hmm. uh, that's it. Everybody that's has his job. Mm -hmm. If your job is brain work, computer science, mm -hmm. fine. Yeah. Once you do computer science, somebody will be doing tiling, others will be doing plumbing. Okay. But you should work at all costs. So if it's brain work, fine. You are, you are lucky. The IQ is not the same. Yours is so high, you can do the brain work and do it with all joy. And you should be very honest and not be adding zeros to... Uh, uh -huh. I was coming to that. <laughs> that this brain work, if I can look at where the holes are and put things and get money, isn't that also brain work? You, you go to hell. <laughs> God does not support uh, stealing. No. Because in the book of Isaiah, uh, Revelation, I think the thieves are also mentioned. <laughs> uh, I'm not very sure, but I think if you are stealing, you don't have to expect yourself to be. Um, but it, it, it's all brain work. Mm. Anyway, we are discussing work, <laughs> the Bible perspective on work. Today, on Watch These Signs. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, let's read 21 verse 8 and 22 verse uh, read, I think we'll find it one minute. Revelation chapter 21 verse 8 says by the cowardly unbelieving and then 21 27 yes. okay. abominable, murderous, sexually immoral, sorceress idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone which is the second death you have to be a liar to be able to steal. Yes, that is it. Now, Pastor, there's uh, this other issue connected with brain work. And now, there are some pastors are also giving us lotto numbers. So I, I don't work, but I can pen the numbers mm -hmm. and, 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 and stake lotto. <laughs> if I win, isn't that a blessing? Lotto is a very dangerous, addictive practice. You will do it once. You squander all the money God has given you. Your children will not go to school. Your wife will not be happy. And you might think you will win. You will never win. Because I've won before. It will be once in your life. You will not get it again. Because the, that, that kind of pay me and the mathematics that you are doing. Mm -hmm. How do you know that next week you, you will get it? And you are spending your money. And money, you see, whatever money you have, you have to give account of it because you are a steward. God has put means in your hands for you to do his work so that you can account for it. The money that went and didn't come back, how are you going to account for that? So gambling is a very dangerous thing that Christians should stay away from. You might think it will give you quick money, but I want to tell you all gamblers end up with nothing at the end of the time because it will appear to be giving you some satisfaction once in a while. But the long and when you get that joy, and because it's additive, you continue pumping money, pumping money, all your money will be gone. And you, 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 you'll be in serious trouble. Understand there was a guy just last week. 
you, he was working for a uh, fuel station. They used all the money to seek Lotto. He has been jailed now. One hundred, some one hundred twenty thousand. And yeah. he didn't win. Didn't win. But uh, looking critically at, at it, what is wrong uh, when you pit gambling against work? What is wrong? Gambling, one. Well, but isn't that work? Because I, I crack my, brain, my Please, brain. Let's read Galatians 7 before we begin to look at it. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. You have to sow before you reap. With work, you sow by putting energy in some kind of vocation. Mm. Then you reap but with the benefits that come to you. Mm. But, but uh, uh, gambling, you want to go and get money for doing no work. You put one CD there, you want to get 1,000. Mm. And th that is not reaping uh, what you have sown. So in the long run, you begin to give money away and you're not going to get as much as you put in. Squander your money when you have to uh, give account of the resources God has put in your hands. Uh, it, it, it is very, very dangerous. Uh, my final question on the gambling thing. Uh, you said you put in uh, one CD, you want to win a million. But that's a kind of uh, investment or business. Because if I, I can start a business with 10 CDs, after uh, two, three, four years, I get 50 CDs. That business, that, 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 there's no speculation. Mm -hmm. You work and God begins to add to it gradually. But the little thing, you put the money there, it is gone. Once in a while, we, we win 1%. We put the money there, it is gone. Then, when you are coming to, to work, you will not even find money for your children and your wife. Mm. Well, all the money went into Lutu. And in the long run, there will be chaos and confusion in the house because you will not have enough to take care of your family. Yeah. Uh, apart from gambling, we also, you know, now pastors give Lotto number. <laughs> and then we have some uh, money doublets. That one I have worked. And uh, I, I bring it so that you can double the money. And then you have those who would not work, but go and do Sakawa. That is what is happening in... No, but I, I'm not even defined as nowhere because Sakawa too is Sakawa effort. <laughs> it involves effort. Sakwa has to do with Second Kings 1770, where people are selling themselves to Satan. Mm. Any kind of job that will involve the occult and the links with Ephesians 6 12. There's one thing that about talk about. Ephesians 6, verse 12. It says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly that places. That is where I'm talking about, the spiritual hosts of wickedness in high places. You get yourself with them. Mm. They will give you the first uh, quantum of money. Then they will tell you to do sacrifice. Mm. That is where you, you go against the principle of God. Because you either have to send your wife or your child or a relative or your mother or your friend and you kill them so that you continue to make money and you will not stop continue that is why ritual murders are uh, multiply in africa because people want to work mm. without sweat and make money and this, it is very dangerous in fact it's something that uh, is not done and done quickly mm. the people who are the artisans who are doing the masonry the carpenters, the mechanics, the tilers, the plumbers, they are aging and very soon they'll be out of the system. But the youth of today don't want to work. They want to do sakawa and make money. So the time will come. There will be no uh, uh, artisans in the country to, to, to fill the void when you want to do something for yourself. Nobody will be there. Because the young people today, they want to sit by the computer and use sakawa to make money. So when we have all the youth doing sakawa money, who would roof the houses that we build? Who would do the plumbing works? Who would do the tiling? Now, when you ask the uh, senior uh, mechanics, they will tell you, 
in the yester years, they were always had apprentices who wanted to sell the mechanics. Today they are not there. Nobody's coming. They all want to go to Saka and make money. So a time will come in the nation when the, the, the cream of people who want to do the work for us, the artisans, they will not be there. But the youth of, youth of today, they want Sakawa, they want money, they will buy their Mercedes Benz, and they will live for two years and die. They don't care. Ghana will be in a very serious trouble. If something is not, if a very serious education is not done, that is where we are going. The mechanics and the artisans and the plumbers and the masons and all those who do the work that we are doing, they will not be there. Professor, let me find out the church, or let me say religious institutions. Have we been able to communicate this concept of work to our members? Because if I come to church, and everybody knows I'm a cocoa seller, I, I may not even be noticed, <laughs> called to do harvest. It is somebody who is sitting in the office and adding numbers and making money who is recognized. And so, as we all want recognition, I will not come to church and testify that my daughter finished university and by the grace of God, she's selling uh, both fruit. Mm. People will think, Mikri, how has the church contributed to this wrong mindset when we diminish some kind of work and uh, so people think, oh, this work is not good for me. But it's a very, we have failed. We have failed. But I, re I read a story about one Supreme Court judge mm. who was transferred to Washington. He was a Baptist. And he went to church. And normally when you go to church, the pastor will call the names of all new members who have joined them. They will stand and he will pray for them. Then when he started calling the names, there was a foreigner from somewhere who mentioned him. He was a landra. The hands were all twisted like that. And looking at the way they were dressed, he went and stood at the other side of the uh, pulpit. But when they called the name of the Supreme Court judge, mm -hmm. he went and joined him. All the others were on the left, he went and joined him. So the pastor said, today, I've learned the lesson. At the foot of the cross, the ground was level. Mm -hmm. In the church, everybody should be respected as he is. I'm happy that the Supreme Court judge has joined this one mm. to show that in the church there should be no discrimination. Why should all of you be here on the left? Why this man should be here? So we have to communicate to people that everybody has his peculiar job. God has given him. Mm. So if somebody is doing a certain kind of job, we don't have to uh, just look down the person. Mm. It is a wrong thing. We have to correct immediately. So people will have the joy to do whatever they, they want to do and come to joy because knowing that they are also accepted. Mm. Other than that, everybody wants to have a uh, white collar job, and they are not there. When are we going to finish all the factories in Ghana before the 30 million people get jobs to do? It's, it, it, it is impossible. So people should be allowed to do whatever they can do. I mean, uh, just recognize them, make them happy that at least for now, they have found something to do. Other than that, uh, mm. we are sending the wrong signals. But so this issue about talent and skills that God has given us, can we develop our talent into work? Yeah. You see, a talent and potential, mm -hmm. some of them are inborn. There are some people, God has given them, and it is within them. Mm. They just need a little bit of uh, exercise or stress to uh, develop it. But there are some who have to study to get their skills. Yeah. Whichever way, if yours is inborn and it's a potential that can be on, revealed, uh, uh, unveiled so they can use it to work, fine. But if it's, not, if it's not like that and you have to study, continue to study, study until you are able to acquire a skill mm. that will help you to also to work. We are not the same. People are created differently. Mm. So learn and get something that you can use your hand to do. Or if it's a brain work, use your brains. Um, I, I, some guys told, tell me that even medicine mm -hmm. is a learned trait. You can go and study all the what? You have to learn the thing on the job, mm -hmm. see how your senior members do it, mm -hmm. and you do it. Mm -hmm. I don't know, you can do it. It's a learned trait. 
So don't just see somebody that is on a higher pedestal because he do a certain kind of job. Do what you can do, and it is even possible that you can even earn more mm. than the person with that big title and this. Okay, but I know that not to uh, give room for anybody to say that oh. Pasa says I should work with my hands, so education is not important. Mm. How can we use education to improve the work that we have? You see, when you use education, it's just like you have a tool, you have sharpened. Mm. Education, you sharpen the tool mm. so you can do the job better. Mm -hmm. Other than that, if we are going to use blunt tools to work, mm. uh, we will spend a lot of energy and acquire little, little uh, gains. So education is very important. We have to continue studying. Mm. And when you continue studying, your, your, your potential will be unveiled mm. so that you can have the, 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 the sharper tool. To education is very, very important. Everybody must be educated. But when you are being educated and you don't have a job to do, then whatever your hand finds to do, do, do it with all your might. Okay. But there's also uh, some group of people who say, oh, I don't want to work. I will do Namijuma. I work for God, so I'll go around uh, house to house and be preaching. And uh, as the Bible says, the one who labors should not, uh, those who he is laboring for should feed. Uh, that is the kind of job I will do. What is your take on that? Because I know there are some who say I've been called into ministry, but me, I'm not a pastor. But when I wake up in the morning, I also think that. My calling is to take my Bible, go from house to house. That is my work. Let's read Amos 7, 14 before I, I say anything. Amos chapter 7, verse 14. Amos chapter 7, verse 14. Where is Amos? Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos. Okay. Daniel, Hosea. Hosea, and then Amos. Amos. Joel. Hosea Joel then Amos. Amos chapter seven, seven 14. verse fourteen. Okay. Then Amos answered and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor was I a son of a prophet, but I was a sheep breeder and a tender of sycamore fruit. Then the Lord took me as I followed the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. So Amos was working. Then God took him. Let's read Acts 18, 1 to 3. Acts chapter 18, verse 1 to 3. Acts chapter 18, verse 1 to 3. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and went to Corinth. And he found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome, and he came to them. So because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them and worked, for by occupation they were tent makers. Yes, this is, this is Paul. Paul's vocation, apart from being the preacher of righteousness, he was a tent maker. Mm -hmm. Let's be say First Kings 19. Fair. First, First Kings, Kings 19, 19 to 21. First Kings chapter 19, 19 verse 20, 19 to 21. 19 to 21. So he departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him, and he was with the 12. Then Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Please, let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. And he said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? So now we have Amos was a, 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 a gatherer of sycamore fruits, and the Lord called him to become his prophet. Paul was a tent maker. Mm -hmm. Then the Lord called him to become a preacher of righteousness. Elijah. Elisha was mm -hmm. plowing. He was a farmer. So if you say God has called then you. Then the disciples. They were... Let's look chapter 5. <laughs> <laughs> Luke chapter 5. Verse 1 to 6. 
Luke chapter 5. 1, 2, verse, 10. Okay. Luke 5, 1, 2, and 10. So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God that he stood up by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from there and were washing their nets. Mm. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. Verse 10. Verse 10. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. So the disciples were full-time fishermen. Jesus called them. So it is not right to say that because I want to be a preacher, I don't have to work. Work and add the preaching and God will bless you. And in fact, the ministry is a call. Mm. If God has not called you, you will not be able to perform. Amos was called and became a very effective prophet. Elisha was called and you look at what that he did and act a uh, Paul too. So uh, I think those who want to just let go of their jobs and go and do the work of God, we have examples of people who were working and the Lord called them so that when there's a crisis, you can go back and do your work. That is it. You're watching Watch These Signs. We are discussing the biblical perspective on work, the Bible and work. What does the Bible say? We have found out that right even before the fall, God had instructed Adam and Eve to dress the garden. After the fall, they were to work. And we saw examples of people who worked. If you want to join this conversation, send us your contributions through our WhatsApp line 055 968 That's our uh, uh, WhatsApp line. If you're watching on Facebook, YouTube, you can also drop your comment there and we would read your comments and answer your questions for you. Watch this signs, the biblical perspective on work. We'll take a break and we will be right back. So don't go away. Uh, keep watching Hope Channel. In a world where hopelessness stirs us from dawn to dusk, our only source of solace remains in the blessed hope of our redemption through Jesus Christ. It is for this purpose that the Adventist Youth Ministry, in partnership with the Southwest Ghana Conference of the Seven-day Adventist Church, brings to you a program dubbed Hope in the Troubled World. God's anointed servants, Pastor Godfrey Kwesi Ataburo and Pastor Alfred Kwesi Esiem, will be ministering to us from the Takradi Central Seven-day Adventist Church live on Hope Channel Ghana each day starting from the 16th to the 22nd of May 5 a.m. and 7 p.m. each day. This program will replicate in all Adventist churches across the nation. Christ is expecting us to spread the good news. I will go. Will you? Hello. Are you part of the 1000? Yes, you. Are you one? Pop Channel Ghana is inviting you, your friends and family to join the soul winning train in what is dubbed Hope Club 1000. Hope Club 1000? Yes, Hope Club 1000. It is a scheme designed to enable persons like you who want to support the growth of Hope Channel to donate a minimum of 100 cities every month. If you cannot cross the ocean and the heathen land explore, if you cannot sing like angels and preach like Paul, if the master's call for evangelism is at the core of your hearts, then this is an opportunity for you to contribute your resources for the advancement of the soul winning agenda of the channel. Do you want to donate? Pay directly to the Hope Channel Momo account 0249193083 or Zenith Bank account number 6010190657 and be blessed. I must be part of this train.
You're welcome back from the break. You're on Hope Channel, you're watching Watch These Signs, and we're discussing the Bible and work. We will we'll look at two issues uh, before we start the, uh, reading the comments. One has to do with a, 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 a mindset some Christians have, that the Bible says the poor would always be with us. So. Uh, some people who are poor should not work, and those who God has blessed should uh, <laughs> help them. Pastor, what's your take on that? Let's read that text of Deuteronomy 11, 15, 11. That is where the text is. The text that you're talking about. Deuteronomy chapter 11. <coughs> 15, 11. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 11. And that says, For the poor will never cease from the land. Therefore, I command you, say, you shall open your hand wide to your brother, to your poor and your needy in your land. The Bible didn't say the poor people were not working. Mm -hmm. They were working, but they were not making enough. Mm -hmm. Maybe they are because of age or disability. That is why when you see somebody like that, mm -hmm. she's working, putting in energy, but because of some situation, she's not making enough, then you help the person. Mm -hmm. The Bible didn't say the person is not working. So you should be working. Mm. Do all that you can. And if what you are making is not enough, mm. then God will use somebody to help you. Okay. This Pastor, the help. Is it that now my daily bread must come from that person? No, or the person once says, in oh, a while. I'm giving you some money to add to whatever yeah, you're it doing. Will be, it will be once in a while. You, you should try and work so that you make it. But if you are not making it, mm. God will have somebody, use somebody to help you once in a while. Mm. That is so it's not a right. I must do because the Bible no, no, says no, no, no. open your uh, arms <laughs> wide. No, that is not what is it. You see, what I know is that making money is a talent. Mm. So people, because the way God has created them, they're able to make a lot of money using their brains like the brain work. Mm. So those people, when they see somebody is working, sweating, maybe selling ice water, it is not enough. Mm. Then he will help the person, but don't say uh, because the Bible has said uh, we should take out the poor. I won't work. You will die. <laughs> you die from uh, uh, <laughs> begging is my work. Is is that sinful? It is, it because is. in the morning, I, the Bible says I labor from morning till evening. So I get up, I go onto the street. That's the work I do from morning till evening. Don't, Calling people, asking. Don't for, put your problems on other people. God will not be pleased with you. See, God wants to see His children putting their best to work and make money. Mm -hmm. And when what they are getting is not enough, mm -hmm. you will help them. Don't go a begging. Don't do that. It will destroy your credibility. Mm. Begging is not a good thing to do. Do what you can as a worker. And God will supply the difference. That is what I know should happen. Pastor, one other aspect about work. If, I, if my work destroys the environment mm -hmm. or destroys other human beings, what does the Bible say about that? You see? So, Galam, say, for example. Mm -hmm. When you read Ecclesiastes 1090, mm -hmm. and the Bible says, money answers all things. So people think, whatever you have to do to make money mm -hmm. is okay. But let's read Revelation chapter 11, verse 18. First, we read 6, verse 10. Revelation read, chapter 11, 11 verse 18. Verse 18. Revelation eleven eighteen says, The nations were angry and your wrath has come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that you should reward your servants, the prophets and the saints, and those who fear your name small and great, and shall destroy those who destroy the earth. God will destroy those who destroy the earth using Galamse. Let's read Deuteronomy 20, 19 and 20. Galamse says, they are a menace to the dish. And they should go and read this test. Deuteronomy 20, 19, and 20. Deuteronomy chapter 20, 20 verse 19 and 20. When you besiege a city for a long time while making war against it to take it, 
You shall not destroy its trees yes. by welding an axe against them. If you can cut of them, do not cut them down to use in the siege. For the th tree of the field is man's food. Yes. Wow. The, uh, it, it, there's a universe axiom says mm. that when the last tree dies, the last man dies. The reason is that people have forgotten that it's the trees that in their photosynthesis, manufacturing their food, they take carbon dioxide and produce oxygen. And the oxygen we use is from the work of the trees. So when it is, uh, uh, no more there, how, where will we get our oxygen to be? So God even gave rules of Most warfare. And don't cut trees down. Cut, uh, protecting trees even during war. Mm. In fact, those who are discriminatory in cutting trees down, they have a, 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 something to answer before God. The Galab says, they will answer. Ah, destroying trees, destroying forest, destroying water, all for the sake of money. Uh, First Timothy chapter uh, uh, 16 says that the love of money, the love of evil money, <laughs> the root cause of all evil. The pastor has qualified it. <laughs> love of evil money, destroying everything just because you want to make money. God will punish you. We have to protect the forest because it is the trees that generate the oxygen we use all over the world. Mm. That is why the uh, uh, United Nations doesn't want anybody to touch the amazing forest. And we, the nature that we have, we are destroying it. We will. Get, we will wait to see whether we get the oxygen to breathe. <laughs> Some comments have come <laughs> in. But, Pastor, this is a very interesting area we can look at because there are a lot of people who are working, not just destroying the environment. You have doctors trained who are abortionists and they make good money from that. You have uh, all manner of people who are using their skills wrongfully. They are working, yes. But how they work? Don't do anything that will take life. Don't do anything that will jeopardize somebody's happiness. Mm. Don't do anything that will destroy the earth. You are working, yes. But work according to the principles of God. The Bible said, thou shalt not kill. So anything you do that will take the life of somebody away, you are not going to uh, go scot free do the right thing. Yes, you uh, do abortion and make money, but you have a big answer. Question to answer before God, because only God has a right to take life. Nobody else has the right. You, you can't take life. I sell alcohol and I bring my tithes. <laughs> oh, I work for an alcohol production uh, company. In fact, they have a problem. Alcohol is the world's number one licensed poison. Poison, which is licensed. No matter what they see, God will not hold them guiltless. Because all the accident of the rules, 99% is caused by alcohol. People are drunk and they are killing, they kill 700 and something within three, uh, three months. And they are still killing. COVID-19 has not been able to get to that level. But uh, accidents have destroyed the lives of over 700 people. And all from alcohol. God will hold people responsible. Okay. Let me read some comments on our Facebook uh, wall. Uh, Kojo Anno Jr. says, God bless you, Pastor. Then we have Daniel Nyakumensan, and he says, we need to work no matter what and put laziness aside. No excuses. There are many proverbs that enforce work, and Christians must learn them by heart to be wise. Proverbs 22:13. The lazy man says, there's a lion outside. I shall be slain in the streets. Mm -hmm. The absurdity of the excuses a lazy man makes for his slot reveals the extent of the deterioration wrought in his character. Mm -hmm. The chances of a man eating lion or a murderer being loose in the streets of a town or village at any given time <laughs> is very small. <laughs> Yet, I made an excuse for continuing laziness. Indeed. So, every day, oh, I, I, I shall do this. The sun will rise and set. So, yes, there's no excuse for work. And, Pastor, that even brings me. Some people say, oh, I was working. My boss had it, I don't like, so I stopped working. That's a very dangerous thing to do. You should work. <laughs> Work at all costs. Okay. Kojo again says, without work, man's existence will be boring and lack happiness. Mm, Indeed. Mm. 
Elder Dr. J.B. Forge of Pemkwasi. Elder, good evening again. <laughs> and he says, thank you for this all-important topic. Now on uh, WhatsApp, the comments that have come in say, I am Mrs. Rejoice Oklu Sotome from Volta region. Thank you, Pastor, for your teaching. Why is it that Adventist pastors don't work? They, they don't work out. Like, apart from ministry, uh, uh, is that because ministry is work? Yeah. So I'm, 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 I'm thinking that uh, if Paul was a tent maker work. as well ah. as a preacher, why is mm. it that as, uh, Adventist pastors don't do other works okay. in addition to ministry? Okay. I, I think that's the question. Mm. In okay. our situation, our work is 24 hours service. Mm. So if you do something else, you don't be able to perform the 24 hour service. That mm. is why they, they don't allow us to do any other work. Okay. Um, I know there's no name to this. There's no name to this one. It says, thanks for treating such topic. Please, my question is, can Adventist, okay, still be, so there's another question. Can an Adventist pastor engage in another white color job? Mm -hmm. Just as mm -hmm. so, that is answered. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, another person says there should be no discrimination on the basis of work. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because everybody's work is essential. That's mm -hmm. correct. Uh, okay. Uh, this is uh, from WhatsApp. Elder JB Forjo says, Thank God it's another Thursday and watch this science is here once again. Thank you for another very important topic. May God continue to give you more interesting and important topics to educate us on every week. Elder, thank you for watching us every week. Abortionists have a case to answer before God. There's no name to that one. And finally, there's uh, Michael Owusu Efriye Ibuakwa says, Good evening to Madam Solis and Pastor. Please, I want to know if preachers at various market centers and in buses mm -hmm. who ask for money after they preach are workers. <laughs> that's based on what pastor said that whatever your hands find to do <laughs> do it well is building agent a work uh, is it uh, in this case if building agent means those, uh, those, those who who for accommodation for people that's no job what's up with his job they get into trouble all the time no but it is work <laughs> he goes around finding out who wants to rent their house <laughs> and then would if you call him he will recommend them to you they are always in trouble <laughs> but, <laughs> maybe that's occupational hazard <laughs> do a job that is uh, what should I say with dig dignity you know you have a job you're doing it it is your job mm -hmm. but just to be a parasite on people's rooms and you get into trouble no, but now <laughs> there's this real estate uh, managers or whatever they call them and they are making good money mm -hmm. They sell houses. And yes. They call real estate re realtors. Realtors, exactly. They make good money. But uh, the bottom lines are so they get into serious problem. Okay. Just as all other works. <laughs> <laughs> so, Pastor, he, he, this other question was if I preach in the bus and afterwards I say, let me take collection. After all, it is work he's doing very well. That's why his hands are If found. you have a job you are doing, mm. and you have a timeline, mm. say, so within so, so and so, I will go and preach. Go and pray, but don't go and stand there and ask for money. Mm -hmm. Live on your money, your, your job, and spend that time mm -hmm. spreading the gospel. That one is okay with me. Mm -hmm. But if you want to use that as your vocation, mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's right. Do something. Mm -hmm. Then have a time segment to go and do God's work. Okay. And God will bless you. All right. There's a, this is from Ajoa from Bono East region. And she has a very important, she has a very important uh, issue here. It says, um, Good evening, Doc and Pastor. God bless you all for such a nice program. But my problem is, due to my work, the kind of relationship between me and my God is broken because I don't get enough time to pray and read. Please, what should I do? I don't know the kind of work that he's doing, mm. but you should at all costs pray mm. and read your Bible. Mm. If your job is taking so much of your time, then it means you're going to spend less time sleeping mm -hmm. when we come to your house you should have to still have time for court and pray and and uh, reading your bible mm. so i don't know the kind of job that you are doing but 
no matter what, mm. your relationship with God should be continuous. Because behind the scenes, mm. the workers of evil are also working. Mm. And it's God's business to uh, build a wall of fire around the Zechariah 2 fire, the Jeremiah 15, 20, 21. Mm -hmm. So when you don't get in touch with heaven, you, you could be left to the a destruction of the evil one. So no matter the quantum of time your job will take you take from you, you still have to have time to, to read your Bible and pray. Okay. But I want uh, to find out, I, part of the problem I see from uh, Ajoy's uh, text is this. Is it only when I kneel by my bed, I sit in my room, I get up at 3 a.m. to pray, that is the only time I can spend with no, God. No, if you are job, you are doing a good job, yeah. and it is always you are always on the move. Yeah. Pray as you move around. Okay. A, li a little time that we have, read your Bible. So even whilst I'm sitting in the trot going you to the office, praying. I can be praying. Can be praying. Yes. If it takes me one hour, I that is one hour with God. Yes, you can be praying. Because but remember, I, I, read you can pray lying, sleeping, read, pray. Have God in your thoughts mm. and pray. And Philippians two five. Let the man of Christ be in you. Mm. Remember God all the time. Okay. So wherever you are, as you do the work, you can be praying whilst... And mm. even now, we have audio Bibles. If yeah. you're sitting in the car, you can plug yeah. it into your ears. Mm. So there are other very practical ways. I think that sometimes, because we talk about spending a quiet time, some people think that once I've not been able to spend that quiet time, then I, sh I can't pray. You can but be praying, you can be praying sleeping, everywhere. So, I, I, I draw, we hope that the Lord would help you find very creative ways of spending time with Him. Our time is up yeah. and we want to draw the curtains on this very interesting discussion. Work is not punishment. It, was, it is not a post-sin remedy. Mm -hmm. Before there was sin, God had commanded Adam and Eve to dress and keep the garden. Also in Exodus 20 from verse 8 to, the, 11. to 11, the biblical injunction for us to rest on the Sabbath day comes with a very important uh, point that six days you should labor and do all your work. So rest, <laughs> the lazy man's excuse can be one day. You can use the <laughs> Sabbath to rest. But the Lord expects that six days you should work and do all your work. Then rest can be meaningful. I hope you learned a few things here. And most importantly, your work should not destroy the environment. Mm. It should not destroy God's creature. It should make you a faithful steward. And the time we spent, Pastor says, we would account for that time. So work, that is what you sow. And may the Lord bless the work of your hands. We would end with a prayer and Pastor will do that for us. Pastor, I want you to pray for, especially uh, mm. most of us who, are, who call ourselves unemployed graduates, <laughs> that the Lord will help us to find something to, find to, do. Something to do. Okay. Gracious Father, we want to thank you for taking us through this lesson again. And as we live in this country, there are hundreds and thousands of people trained in the tertiary institutions where they are working. I'm praying that you, 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 you speak to them at their quiet hours and direct them as to something they can do in the interim while they await the jobs that have to do the, the, the education that they had. Continue to direct your children. You ha we have our jobs in your hands. Give us the visions and the dreams. Tell us what to do. The little time we can do so that whatever our hands want to do, we can do it with all our hearts. It is your, your, your blessing that will make us rich. Don't let us get into anything that will destroy the environment and destroy your creation because you will hold us accountable. Be with all the viewers and help us to continue to think about these things because we are praying in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. As we close, I want to uh, remind you that you can be a member of Hope Club 1000 where you commit to donate a hundred cities monthly to hope so that very uh, educative and inspiring programs like this would continue. Your being a member of Hope Club 1000 
We keep Hope Channel on air 24-7. May God bless you as you consider this and as you purpose in your heart to support the station. Until we meet again next week, the caution is always this. Keep yourself safe. Pray and trust that the Lord who is our keeper would keep you. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.